Afterwards there sprang from their race two youths, one of whom was called Technites, Artificer, and the other Janos Autochthon, Earth-born Aboriginal. These devised the mixing of straw with the clay of bricks, and drying them in the sun, and moreover invented roofs. From them others were born, one of whom was called Agros, and the other Agroros or Agrotes, and of the latter there is in Phoenicia a much venerated statue, and a shrine drawn by yokes of oxen, and among the people of Byblos he is named preeminently the greatest of the gods. These two devised the addition to houses of courts, and enclosures, and caves. From them came husbandmen and huntsmen. They are also called Aelte and Titans. From these were born Aminos and Magus, who established villages and sheepfolds. From them came Miser and Siduk, that is to say, straight, and just, these discovered the use of salt. From Miser was born Tadus, who invented the first written alphabet. The Egyptians called him Thoith, the Alexandrians Thoth, and the Greeks Hermes. From Siduk came the Dioscuri, or Kaberi, or Karabants, or Samothraces. These, he says, first invented a ship. From them have sprung others, who discovered herbs, and the healing of venomous bites and charms. In their time is born a certain Elion called the Most High, and a female named Baruth, and these dwelt in the neighborhood of Byblos. And from them is born Epigeus or Autochthon, whom they afterwards called Uranus, so that from him they named the element above us Uranus because of the excellence of its beauty. And he has a sister born of the aforesaid parents, who is called Ge, Earth, and from her, he says, because of her beauty, they called the earth by the same name. And their father, the Most High, died in an encounter with wild beasts, and was deified, and his children offered him libations and sacrifices. And Uranus, having succeeded to his father's rule, takes to himself in marriage his sister Gu, and gets by her four sons, Elus who is also Kronos, and Biatilus, and Dagon who is Sitan, and Atlas. Also by other wives Uranus begot a numerous progeny, on which account Go was angry, and from jealousy began to reproach Uranus, so that they even separated from each other. But Uranus, after he had left her, used to come upon her with violence, whenever he chose, and consort with her, and go away again. He used to try also to destroy his children by her, but Go repelled him many times, having gathered her allies. And when Kronos had advanced to manhood, he, with the counsel and help of Hermes Trismegistus, who was his secretary, repels his father Uranus, and avenges his mother. To Kronos are born children, Persephone and Athena. The former died a virgin, but by the advice of Athena and Hermes Kronos made a sickle and a spear of iron. Then Hermes spoke magical words to the allies of Kronos, and inspired them with the desire of fighting against Uranus on behalf of Gu. And thus Kronos engaged in war, and drove Uranus from his government, and succeeded to the kingdom. Also there was taken in the battle the beloved concubine of Uranus, being great with child, whom Kronos gave in marriage to Dagon. And in his house she gave birth to the child begotten of Uranus, which she named Demerus. After this Kronos built a wall around his own dwelling, and founded the first city, Byblos in Phoenicia. Soon after this he became suspicious of his own brother Atlas, and, with the advice of Hermes, threw him into a deep pit and buried him. At about this time the descendants of the Dioscuri put together rafts and ships, and made voyages, and being cast ashore near Mount Cassius, consecrated a temple there.